Hello, this is Abbott Austin with another edition of Talk Lexio, and uh, coming a little bit late in the weekend, so I haven't, I haven't had a chance to get around to this earlier. But uh, for today's, or for this edition of Talk Lexio, I, I want to use the first reading from the Mass for the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, also known as Corpus Christi. So that first reading is from uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 3 through 8. So I'll read that through twice. Uh, but before that, let's begin with prayer. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the first step of Lexi Divina is to read the passage with faith. This is God's word speaking to us. So let us listen to it and see what God is saying to, a, to us through these words. So again, this is Exodus chapter 24, verses 3 through 8. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. So I'll read the passage again, uh, paying attention now. We want to pay attention. What is the Lord saying to us? What strikes us in this passage? When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. So we read this passage. Now we move to the second uh, step in Lexi Divina, which is to meditate on it. So there's different ways you can start your meditation. You have to have some starting point, though. And usually what I will do in these episodes uh, of Talk Lexi is just to say, what strikes you? What jumps out at you? And then you make that your starting point. Think about it. Another way... Um, Related, but a slightly different way of starting our meditation is, is to ask questions of the text. You know, just say, what is being said here? What's the main point? Um, what's the context? And that can then start bringing out meaning in the text. Here, I want to ask a, a slightly different question, but one that we can ask when we do Lexia Divina is, why is this reading chosen by the church for the Feast of Corpus Christi, for the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ? Right, so um, the church in its wisdom, and her wisdom, and indeed the saints down the ages have seen this passage as being fit for the celebration of the Eucharist, of Christ's presence to us, and his body and blood present to us in the Eucharist at Mass. Right, so it's a way we're asked this question, we're kind of in conversation with uh, the church and then the saints uh, down the ages in the church who have pointed to this passage as having significance. Right, so we're kind of doing something of a group lexio when we ask a question like that. We're bringing into uh, the conversation um, people through the, in the down the ages in the church and why they've chosen this text. So we can do that. And it's just one way of kind of inviting in uh, kind of what other people have thought and trying to think about what their insights are into the text. One reason then that this seems to be chosen for the celebration of Christ's body and blood is that Christ's uh, body and blood is offering in the Mass, is offering himself on the cross, is known, is understood to be the fulfillment of all sacrifices. 
So we see here in the book of Exodus, an early uh, form of sacrifice among the Jewish people, right? And so it has hints. It's going to be fulfilled in Christ's sacrifice on the cross. So we see already in this sacrifice, things that are, if understood correctly, are pointing, pointing ahead to the perfect sacrifice of Christ on the altar uh, of the cross, right? So uh, we hear here about <clears throat> the blood, right? And the blood of Christ. Right, the New Testament will speak about that, how we're saved, uh, we've been washed in the blood of Christ. And this is forms a covenant, right? Jesus says at the Last Supper, this is a, uh, speaks of the covenant he's making with us. So here that speaks about the covenant. One thing that's in this passage that I do find interesting is how it goes back and forth between the ritual sacrifice and the teaching of the Lord. Right, so it starts off, Moses says to the people, he relates to the people all the words and ordinances of the Lord. And the people say, we will do everything the Lord has told us. Right, So the law, um, the precepts of the Lord, the instruction of the Lord. Right, That's featured in this reading. But then it goes to the ritual sacrifice. And then it goes back to uh, the book of the covenant. Uh, Moses wrote down the ordinances of the, of the Lord. In the book of the covenant, he reads it to the people. They say, we will do, we will heed and do what the Lord has said. Right? And then it goes back to the ritual sacrifice, the blood, sprinkling it on the people. And then Moses says, this is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. Right? So again, the two are put together, the blood of the covenant from the sacrifice and the teachings, the precepts, the ordinances of the Lord. Right? So uh, one way of thinking about this is that when we think about the ordinances of the Lord, what the Lord is teaching in his law, we're speaking about the will of God, doing God's will. And then we have the sacrifice on the other hand. And so um, if you look, this might get us thinking about, if you might recall, um, the letter to the Hebrews, which speaks so much about Christ coming and fulfilling uh, the sacrifices of old, fulfilling them anew and perfectly in his own offering of his own body. And the letter to the Hebrews will quote one of the Psalms, I think Psalm 40, if I remember correctly the number, um, that how Jesus puts these words, uh, understand these words of being said by Jesus, that he has come, behold, you have um, my body, it speaks about having a body and coming to do the will of God. Right? So this offering of one's body, the, um, and then the doing of the will of God, um, are come together in this. It's a really mysterious thing, and I wish I could describe it better. Another passage to think about is in Romans 12, I think the first two verses, um, Again, uh, St. Paul will speak about our spiritual worship uh, by renewing our minds and uh, doing the will of God, you know, according to the will of God, right? So renewing our minds, in not in conformity to this world, but in conformity to God's mind and God's will. So the key to understanding sacrifice, this is being suggested, I think, the key to understanding sacrifice, and therefore to understand Christ's sacrifice and what we're doing in the Mass is it's tied to doing God's will, right? This giving of ourselves with Christ in the Eucharist is our giving ourselves in submission to God's will, trusting that if we do God's will, we will, in the end, be saved. We will have the perfect joy and fulfillment that God promises us, right? So um, these two things are together, this sacrifice, offering ourselves and sacrifice as an offering pleasing to God and doing God's will. They have to be kept together, and in a way, um, the ritual sacrifices, the sacraments, the, uh, the mass, these rituals that we're doing are all supposed to be uh, communicating and to ourselves and also to God um, that we are here to do God's will. I've come to do your will, right? So um, it's a mysterious thing. It's so much to think about. And I feel like I've probably uh, not made it any clearer, but um, sometimes that happens with Lexi Divina. Just start thinking about things. We have kind of uh, loose ends left at the end. But there's something there, I think. So something to think about. So let's now move to the third step of Lexi Divina, which is to offer a prayer petition based on our meditation. So I'll offer such a prayer now. Almighty God, I ask that by receiving the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, I may be renewed and strengthened in doing your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then we'll spend a few moments in simple uh, contemplative rest and a quiet spirit of contemplation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
God bless you. Thank you for those who have joined me and will join me uh, as a recording. So may God bless you and watch over you. Pray for us here at St. Procopius Abbey. We'll be on retreat actually this coming week. So keep us in your prayers. Thank you.